I live in Saratoga, California, and I am so happy to be part of the music exhibit, as well as to have a piece hanging in the National Quilt Museum. Next. <clears throat> this is the piece that I have hanging in the exhibit. It is called Tonight God is in the House. I've made a few quilts referencing jazz, and this one is based on William Gottlieb public domain photo of Art Tatum. Gottlieb is best known for his portraits of leading jazz musicians, <clears throat> pardon me, in the 1930s and 40s. Art Tatum was one of the greatest jazz pianists of all time and his work is still studied. Um, the story goes that one evening Tatum walked into a club where Fats Waller was playing. Fats reportedly said, I only play the piano, but tonight God is in the house. The idea of fracturing the portrait is representative of how I view jazz. The music and picture maintain the core rhythm while the musicians and threads expand, improvise, and play with the melody. Tatum was a master. Next. The bulk of my work start with photographs. I love breaking apart photos and putting them back together in different ways. I use apps and photo editing software, primarily Photoshop, to manipulate and work with the photos. This piece, Tiger Eye, is another side of fracturing images and creating a type of mosaic quilt. Each button or bead is hand sewn to a quilt base. Next. Liberty Marches was made for and traveled with the Threads of Resistance exhibit. I selected images of protest signs from the first women's march, manipulated them in Photoshop, and then placed them on the image of the Statue of Liberty. The idea being that since Lady Liberty couldn't physically march, she called all the signs to her and proudly wears them. The end result was then printed twice, cut, woven, and stitched. Next. This piece, Choices, was part of the 2017 Juried Artist Member Show Junctures at the San Jose Museum of Quilts and Textiles. <clears throat> this is an image of the electric trolley bus lines in San Francisco and seemed perfect to me to symbolize the definition of juncture, all of the choices that are confusing and possible. Next. I am drawn primarily to images with depth and dimension when I'm doing the mosaics as well as flora. Consequently, the echinacea keeps reappearing in my work. I'm grateful that in the language of flowers, it has many meetings just to make coming up with titles easier. This one is Be Strong. <clears throat> Next. And I'm really sorry, I'm having an allergy attack evidently. <clears throat> This piece, Seaside Succulent, currently traveling with Quilt National, depicts another recurring love of mine, succulents. One of the appeals of this mosaic process is being able to look at the piece in two different ways. From far away, they appear as highly defined and dimensional images. And the closer you get, they get more diffused and just become a tapestry of buttons and beads. And I also like the tactile nature of it. Next. This is one of my more recent pieces called White Door. I'm married to a photographer and Kurt lets me commandeer images from time to time. This began as one of his photos of an old adobe in disrepair in Anton Chico, New Mexico. Part of the process is trying to take out the background colors in the photo just enough so that when I print it, I can see the color of the fabric that I'm printing those images on. Next. I live in a very small 1,650 foot square house. No, it's not square, it's a square foot house. Okay, I subscribe to the philosophy that you should never live in anything larger than you're willing to clean and by rights, I should probably be living in a 500 square foot house. When my son moved out, I took over his tiny bedroom as a guest bedroom slash supply room. In actuality, I don't think there is a room in the house that doesn't have art supplies in it. The four bottom shelves on the right of the left-hand image are bead storage, but I also have another rolling cart elsewhere that is full of beads as well. The closet, the image on the right, is a picture of the, the rolling carts that I have that house the buttons. 
But again, there are boxes, jars, bags of buttons stuffed under beds elsewhere in the house. Next. The printer that I use is an Epson P800. It's a pigment-based inkjet printer that can print up to 16 inches wide. And I either use a type of butcher paper or temporarily adhere fabric to cardstock to run the fabric through the printer. Next. And this is my primary work area. Highly portable, able to pick up and move should I ever have company again but it is a corner of my living room, dining room. Um, small, effective, and it works, and I get to look out the front window. 